You just reached 1 million subscribers. I was rapping at first, so I decided to do that to kind of control the narrative. And I like the fact that there are some things that you do that I'm like, how do I, how do I get 350 million YouTube views? Is it gonna take someone else 10 years to get to where you are? Take advantage of every platform that you can do because you never know where you're gonna go viral. Through personal depression, financial ups and downs that are now up, you still built this and it does give you freedom. And what you're saying is like there is hope. There's definitely a possibility for everything. My story is a lot of things start changing for me when I put down some of my vices. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you start. I'm Arlen and I built a multi-million dollar venture fund, Backstage Capital, while homeless. I've not only built my own companies, I've helped hundreds of other founders do the same. So let's get into it. For the first time, I'm interviewing my brother, Alfred Rook Hamilton, because he just reached 1 million subscribers on YouTube. You just reached 1 million, one million subscribers for real life street stars. Right. With a Z yep. and a Y. Yep. How, after how many years? Well, the YouTube page has been up, up for 14 years. Um, me and Jeff started the YouTube page when I was rapping for like, you know, so I guess we've been working on real life street stars. That part of it for about like 10 years. What was it when you first, when you first set it up, what was it the first four years? It was trying to put Dallas artists on the map. And so you would go to shows and interview people or I how would do, it? Yeah, I would go to shows. I would interview people. Um, Jeff was the main camera guy. I was the main guy interviewing. Mm -hmm. And we would just go around seeing the best talent and bringing them back to the couch. And why did you want to do that? I wanted to do that actually because I was rapping at first. So I decided to do that to kind of control the narrative. Mm -hmm. of everything so it started out well if I can control that part then I could put myself on as a rapper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you wanted to become the media platform yes and then make it popular and then therefore you would be able to make yes. yourself popular anybody else you wanted to make popular exactly and so you were looking at it first as an artist right and we're talking I mean really real life real life started decades ago right right it, it started rap, when you yeah, were a teenager life. yeah well it was deck of boys and then, mm. and then me and Sixfold created a, a record label called Real Life Records. Oh, uh, okay. And then yeah. Real Life Street Stars Yeah. was 14 years ago right. or so. So what, t 2010? Yeah. That's crazy. 2010, you go, and there's still videos of this. It's footage yeah, it's of this. All, it's all documented. We're going we're gonna to try to pull some of that, a little bit of that as we're talking about right, it. But right. there's some, some footage there. And some of those people have gone on to be very very successful successful yeah, yeah. yeah. and in kind of ups and downs but yep. it's it's uh, that's really interesting and so then what was the moment where you said okay we're actually gonna install this wall behind people we're gonna put a blue couch yeah that is now so recognizable well the blue couch came uh later on okay what yeah. came, what came first the, the light, wall. light wall so whose idea was that this is uh me and jeff's idea Okay, right. and what made you think of that? Because um, you know why I'm a, asking you these questions because right. there are people right now who are thinking about like starting their own branding and thinking right. about how to put themselves out there, right. and eat, they see the success. Oh, a million subscribers, 350 million views on YouTube. Right. Oh, they already got it. But it all starts somewhere. Right, right, right. So what? What was the? So basically, Jeff and Joker bought this light bulb. Okay. Right, for photography. Oh, so this light wall was used for photography only. Okay. Right. And I had a friend and artist that I was looking at, which was Mo3, right? Mm. He was already doing his thing. He was already had the, the hood fame and all that stuff, but he was doing interviews. I used to pull up on him and interview him. And so one day we were sitting in the studio and I was like, I called a Mo3 and I want an interview. And I was like, man, me and Jeff were just sitting there talking. And then the light wall is right there. And then we decided, and I said, hey, let's pull this couch up onto it. Yeah. And it was called, and we said, uh, we'll call it Real Life Street Stars. And we put the thing in front of it, and Mo3 is the first interview. And you had a blue couch just no, sitting around? No, it wasn't. It was a, you just it, had some, something sitting it, around. It, really, it was actually like, the couch was kind of dirty. <laughs> yeah, it was just sitting around. It was just sitting around. But you were like, wait a second. It and was, so do you remember, so who was in the room? 
It was me and Jeff. You and Jeff. So you and Jeff just looked at each other and said, that's what we're going to do? Or yeah, one me, of and, me and Jeff have always been like that yeah. since um, um, kids. How long have you known each other? I've known Jeff since I was probably like nine years old. So 30 years? Yes. 30 years you've known him. Mm -hmm. And I've known him for that long. Yeah. Almost that long because he used to be this little kid that came around and y'all would go out and play football on the yeah, grass. and everything. We had a snow cone uh shop together that's true it, yeah yeah y'all yeah. would always have that entrepreneurial spirit we right. gotta gotta hit a lick you right. gotta make some money happen make something happen okay cool. so y'all been, been in business launched this and then when it the, the i don't know why i'm obsessed with the blue couch maybe because i'm looking at it but yeah. when did the blue couch come into play the blue couch it came into play when we moved off of uh, lamar and uh we got we upgraded from our studio in north dallas mm -hmm. we moved into lamar and we redid, redid all the furniture, right? Yeah. And I think it was Joker's choice for the blue couch. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. he, he so all three of y'all have had a piece yes. of what this apparatus is today. Because it's, yep. so, it's so recognizable now. Right. Yeah. It's so recognizable. Yep. Yeah. Um, they, I always focus on the light wall, but now it's the blue couch, I guess, because artists uh, and, you know, famous people have came and done things on the blue couch sit down eat food or yeah jump on the couch i think I, I focus on the blue couch too just because it's it, you can take it almost anywhere and i think like if you took it somewhere it would still re all resonate as real life right the light wall is like oh that's real life they're at home right you know so there's there's pieces to it but i think it's really interesting okay so then so then the first let's say 10 it's been 10 years since you really started doing like the interview style mm -hmm. And for people in my audience who may not know what your interviews are like, can you describe a little bit about what your interviews are like and why they're so popular? They're so popular because they're very raw. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we talk about anything in the interview. That's very true. Like anything, <laughs> whatever. And it's just raw. It's a conversation with not just one interview, interview or ho um, talking to you, but it's multiple people. Yeah. So it's a whole bunch of different thoughts of people saying whatever comes to their mind and they get asked random questions. Yeah. So from my perspective, you have very polarizing people on a right. lot of times. So people either love them or hate them. Yes. They have a very specific point of view. Right. They're very open about that point of view. Yes. And then you don't, don't, censor, don't them. censor them. So has anybody been on the blue couch mm -hmm. in front of the light wall who has said something that you as a person, as an individual, just don't agree with? Yeah, we you hate that. that you hate that they say it. We, hate, we yes, of course. Yes, of so course. what do you what do you think about that when that happens? Is it just like it's just a rule? It's no censorship. Yeah, just you know, we don't we're not here to censor you, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sure. Like I think of about like a serial killer. He was to do an interview, right? Nobody probably wants to hear what he has to say, their family or nothing. But then it's still we st we you still watch it because you want to see what this person has to say or what they that's how well you say that as if you haven't done that you have a he's not a serial killer but he is a person who's killed multiple people oh know? yeah yeah so yeah you yeah, have yeah, yeah exactly so you, I, and, you know, and he is like, a staple uh, uh Terrence, Terrence Vincent Williams yeah. but see the thing about Terrence he's reformed and, mm -hmm. and he did his time and he did his time what do you think though have you had any any family members reach out or any anybody I've never from had anybody day? um reach out to a a person that we interviewed. Mm -hmm. I've had more situations of when we were running the studio part of it. What does that mean? Like, so when I'm running the, uh, we used to have like a studio where we would get artists. Yeah. Like, that's the that's where most of the issues come in. Oh, a what? lot of this is what you see. It's not reality. You know, this is entertainment, right? Okay. So when people come up here, you might see them act a fool, do stuff like this, and they know what the people want, and they'll get off camera and they'll be very pleasant, not nothing like the person that you see on the screen. Mm -hmm. So they they're 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 putting on a character, yeah, most of the time. Because many of them are figures, media figures themselves, right? And so if somebody comes on here and, I mean, I've seen it across the board. Actually, right. I've seen that happen in a lot of different situations. They can be real life street stars, it can be the Emmys. Right. <laughs> it can be a lot of different situations. Somebody who is an artist or who is a performer performs. Right. right. And so what you're saying is sometimes that spills into the street where people are like, oh, that's how they are. Yeah, Let me run exactly. Up on them. It's like, you know, 
That's or what, let me come in here and act a fool yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, I'm saying I don't get that anymore because it's what they're saying. It's the it's the internet. Okay. It's but, just not reality. But let's say you're saying it's not reality, but right. there are some real realities going on. on yes, show. yes, like, yes. Let's, let's be real because like when we talk about Terrence Gangster Williams, who I've met, who I think is a lovely person. Right. He really killed some people. Yes, he did. He really killed people and mm-hmm. those people had families. Mm-hmm. And it, I think in a lot of situations that, that it was him or the person, right? Right. Like either he would be dead or, you know, the person would. But that's real. And then you have Jag, Jaguar right out here. Right. I haven't met her in person, but I, I think she's interesting. I think she's a very interesting so person. What what I would go to um Terrence say let's say a Terrence yes. Gangster. He's he's done his time. He's not even that person anymore. Like Yeah. He's just not. Like he's, he's Yeah, he's but uh, but and I and I appreciate that. Right. And I may agree with you. Right. But I but the question is more about how do you for better or for worse, whether you agree with the person or you just don't agree with the person how do you feel like your role is and this company's role is to like just distribute that information are you are you journalists yeah yeah because you just said you're entertainers we're we're entertainers and journalists it's a mixture of now yeah it's it's the future it's like it's all mixed in but you know who else is entertainer who are entertainers and journalists who msnbc fox cnn right they're all they're all because if they weren't they wouldn't take advertising dollars right and they wouldn't create ip they wouldn't create intellectual right. property that were sold to come things to come out so it is I, i'm i'm saying this mostly not to you i'm saying it to my audience right because and to myself right because i you know me i mean your sister you know that i have some moral qualms with right. some of the stuff that airs and it's just my um prerogative to watch what i want and not watch what I don't want. Exactly. But I am also like, hmm, I hate that some of that is out into the world and that we put it out there. Right, right. So I would say, has anybody ever turned on the news lately? <laughs> like, well, so one, one thing I'll say Rachel Maddow does not do on MSNBC yeah. is say, and pardon me because my, my mom is here, but to say, oh, these bitches and these hoes. Right, right, right. I don't see that happening. No, no. So, But what I do see happening is a depressive state that is forced down people throats like everything that's bad going on they're constantly constantly chasing the drum oh sure i agree with you so but are you saying that you're what are you saying that your role is no my role is to put out what's what's real you might get some laughter you might get some feel good you might get whatever but it's still your choice to yeah. watch it. But the only reason I'm staying on this is because right. you made the decision to, to very specifically say it's entertainment. Right. So, so uh, but but it's I, I say, I, like, it's a mixture. Of, it's a mixture. Yeah, it's a mixture. We're living in, in, a, in a new world now. So it's like, it's yes. like the wild, wild gray. west. It's gray area. Yeah. It's just. So on an interview you did, I did uh, on someone else's uh, podcast, mm-hmm. You they asked you if you thought that, I forgot the name of the podcast, but the alcohol. What's the one that's like, they drink champs. Okay. They asked you if you thought it was fair for our, so someone to be on there to have alcohol given to them over and over again and right. then film it and da-da-da. And you said, no, absolutely not. Now, this was a couple of years ago, and you're able to change your mind, but yeah. w- what made you say that? I think it, uh, Drink Champs is set up like that. You know, you're going to go on there, you know, the person's going to, you know, like, they're going to be like, hey, man, yeah, drink. As a matter of fact, if you don't do something right, then you have to drink <laughs> Oh, so it's like mm-hmm. it's kind of built like that, mm-hmm. you know. No, no, nothing against them. That's their podcast. yeah. That's so their they, model. You know, I'm not here to judge how you get your money or anything like that. I don't care like that. But yeah. what I'm saying is, it's I'm, I'm sure people have left that podcast wishing they didn't say that, mm-hmm. wishing they didn't say something. The difference between real life street stars will cut out whatever you said. Okay, so talk to me about that. So, so let's say so Jaguars on this. Jaguars on here, and I'm like. Soon as we start, I say, is there anything that you want that you don't want to t- uh, speak on? And after you're done, if you said something that you don't want to say, we'll take it out. Mm-hmm. And you've been that. That's been the that's model been the, the whole main time. thing. We're not trying to set you up. We don't want you anything. We just want you to be able to give you a good product that you're willing to stand on and that we're willing to put up. Mm-hmm. 
let's break from this for just a second. Okay. A lot of people who are going to watch this are going to know me and yeah. they're going to know what they think of me. And then they're going to, you know, some people will know you and what they know of you. But from your perspective, the last few years of what I've done or what I've been part of. The things that you've done have, um, have not really surprised me. Okay. I would say that I've always seen this. And actually, I see something even even more going on. Like I see you being able to command an audience super big because you have a lot of things to say and your your morals and you stand for something mm-hmm. that that people want to stand for but don't have the courage or guts to get out. And you have a mission mm. that you have to complete. So I'm I'm really proud of everything that you've done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I wasn't fishing for compliments. I was what I wanted to, and I appreciate it. But yeah. I, what I wanted to think about, like. We don't often talk about it like this, but we talk a lot about business together. We talk and we have such different businesses. But when it comes down to it, it's like the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Is that at the same time you're doing your thing. Right. And so it's like and yours doesn't surprise me either. It's like it's exciting and it's fascinating. And it's it's wonderful when you see other people recognize it. Right. That's so cool. And I also like um, I like the fact that we don't we're not in the same lane. And I like the fact that there are some things that you do that I'm like, how do I, how do I get 350 million YouTube views? Right. Like, you know, how, if this video gets more than a thousand views, go ahead and subscribe right now. Girl. If this video gets more than a thousand views, it'll be like, oh, that's great. You know, and if, if your video got a thousand views, you, you throw some, some plates on the floor. Cause right. you'd be like, what's going on with the algorithm? We have to take it down. Yeah, we had to. <laughs> Take it down. So, but it's just really, really cool to see that because I just you always saw me with that mind, with that right. entrepreneurial mind from day one. I always saw you. I've been saying this for years, even before all of this. I've been saying like one of the things I remember is that you took apart. You probably don't even remember this when I talk about it, but mm-hmm. you took apart a computer and you put it back together and you made it. You taught yourself how to mix like to record, mix and master uh-huh. music as a teenager, at the same time being put in remedial classes. Right. Right, being told that you were not as smart as. Figure, like basically that's what they right. were saying to you. They just didn't know that what That they was going didn't on. understand like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like this, and I know that a lot of people go through that. Uh-huh. And today it's all about dyslexia. Uh-huh. Today it's all about ADHD. Right which could be both going right. on with you. Right. Um, but in certain packages, he needs to be put in a remedial class. He's not catching on fast enough. Right, right. And others, and, I, and I've said this too before, I had a white woman girlfriend who was the same age as you, right. who had the same kind of thing where she could take, a, take apart an engine and put it back together again, but she had a hard time reading. And she got, so, and I'm not saying that it's just black and white. Everybody knows that from me. But she got so much support in school. She got extra time to finish class, uh, tests. She got, to, you know, you could talk to a teacher and say, do you know what this means? Did you, you know, could, do I need to read it to you? Right. And then, and then you have that. And so this is what we talk about being underestimated. And for so for you to go and then you and Jeff and, and Joker and, and Dion and Angel, for you all to build this. this, and everybody has something everybody know, has something. in this yeah. life and live in Dallas. Let's, let's be real. Dallas has been very punitive, meaning police stopping you every left and right. You know, mm-hmm. not being able to yeah. like live your life and just live and, and be mm-hmm. free. I just think people need to understand that it's not just like, oh, you made, you know, you made your first million uh, subscribers. Now, anything you want to say about that before I go on? Oh, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of first million subscribers, what was that feeling like? I always told myself that uh, I've never experienced uh, tears of joy. Oh, really? That's never happened. Not even when all six of your children were born? Yeah, never happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the reason that is is because I, when the, my children were born, I was always going through a rough and dark time. Yeah, yeah. So this... Even though I'm on antidepressants right now, yeah, I could feel a joy. You know what I, when that video, when the kids threw that party for you, right. which I hope we, we're going to show that video, right. a little bit of that video, when they threw that party for you just a little bit ago, 
I could hear it in your voice right. that you were genuinely so happy. Yeah. And it's been a while since I heard that. Right. Like I can, you know, I, because you're on the, uh, the medication and it kind of dulls the senses. Mm -hmm. It keeps you from being so depressed, but it also doesn't want you to go high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, so it felt like that to you. Yeah, it felt like, okay, when I was about to hit it, I was like, oh, I could cry right now. Yeah. Was this your, was this your, was this your fast company moment? Yeah. You know how I had my fast company moment? Yeah. The cover? It was that. Okay. So tell me, tell me why it felt that way. A million subscribers. That's not a million people that know about you. <laughs> That's right. That's a million people that want to see what you have going on. Yeah. And they want to be notified. Yeah. When something's going on. Somebody right now who has watched to this point wants to know how. How? How do I do it? Like, well, I would say this. Real Life Street Stars has been consistent mm -hmm. for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Consistent. It never took a break. It was a machine. It's very important. They say if you want to go um, fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go with a team. Mm -hmm. And so, I have a team. Yeah. And and break that down a little bit. So you have three co-founders. Three co-founders. I have uh, a beautiful wife. <laughs> uh -huh. I have uh, Dion, my right hand man. Um, I have my son. I have people that work with me mm -hmm. that edit and do a whole bunch of different things like that. So, uh, man, it's just a, it's just, it's a strong team, even though we, you know, we have our ups and downs, whatever, but that doesn't stop the product. The, the machine. I want to talk, talk about yeah. the machine. How many days a week is somebody in here filming? It, man, this, the thing about this, you're, you're dealing with all types of people. So I'm not, we're not focused on rappers, we're not focused on comedians, we're not focused on billionaires, you know, <laughs> we're mm -hmm. focused on... Who you've had, you've yeah, had Mark Cuban on, yeah. Right, um, mm -hmm. we're not focused, we're focused on anybody that has the clout to make something shape, right? Okay. So this could, an interview could come in at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. so we'll go get that interview. Yeah. Every, it's always on standby, and it could be 30 interviews a month, it could be two. Right. That's 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 what we're living. Yeah, with, you know. And and sometimes you pay people, and sometimes you don't. Yeah, it just depends. Yeah. So the, and that way, the the journalistic part of it is a little different. Although I still know people do stuff about under the table. Right. But that's very that's a little different. Right. Because it it is more um, more of the the media entertainment side of things. Right. And then, do you your income streams are through YouTube monetization? Right. And is there you have merch and stuff too, right? We have merch. Um, that's what we're getting into now. Like we're gonna, I think we're gonna go double down on the merch because um, people like the shirts. Yeah, <laughs> and this is something you said to me recently. You said that when people come on the show and they have a product, right? That product usually sells out. It does immediately. Yeah. So you you always wear your shirts. Like I've been I've been wearing this right. on the road and everything. You always wear your shirts. You have t-shirts. You have different things. That really is, you know, and I'm putting my, my entrepreneur hat back on, that really is the next frontier for you all, is right. the product. It's merch, and you all can do drops, you know, yeah. sp specific drops. This is only, there's only a thousand of these. Get these before they're gone, da 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 da, -da. You could do very specific things. You could do collaborations with some of the people who are more popular with you. Right. Um, but you could also go beyond shirts and clothing to some sort of thing that people in your audience use right uh and i don't know what that is necessarily right. but something yeah but something that's easy that's like a, an easier play that makes sense um because you know i can see that working too right, right? so a lot of street stars teacups <laughs> yeah teacups yes yeah, tea. And yeah. You spill the tea yeah teacups i like it okay uh -huh. but there's definitely um yeah, I'm thinking of things that I wouldn't particularly want you all to sell, but would make sense, like lighters. Right. Like, uh, for sure. You know, different things mm -hmm. that just make sense, right? That you you have to see if you can ship them across state lines, stuff like that. Um, and then, is there any other? Have you thought of any other um, income stream play? So uh, I think we're gonna double down as far as the the where the world is going is is mostly internet, right? Social mm -hmm. media. So we're gonna create another YouTube page with, for the Clips channel. 
Yeah. So we're just gonna nothing but clips are gonna start releasing on there Love because that. we don't get to get it all out because we don't want to step on what we've already put out. So the yeah. clips channel is gonna be something where you can go and you can get three to four, I mean three to six clips a day of of interviews that come. Out. I'm gonna make a point if someone asks a question that may not make sense, but tell me a little bit about the jobs you used to have. Well, jobs I used to yeah, have? like list a couple <laughs> of the jobs you used to have. Um, juicy burger. <laughs> yeah, so at a burger place. A burger place, a CD shop. CD shop. So you were like on the on the floor, standing for like eight hours selling stuff. Yeah, I've always been able to like. Um, I used to be able to pay my rent by selling my CD. Yeah, you sold how many? Five thousand. I sold. I don't even know. I, I you sold, sold thousands. I sold of CDs. thousands of CDs. That was my job. Yeah, so, yeah. So time. the point I wanted to make, and I do think we should talk about that though. The point I wanted to make was. I have been saying this for several months, and I don't know that people quite believe me. Right. Is that you could, like, let's say you're making anywhere from 20000 a year to 250000 a year. Mm -hmm. You could, a year from now, have a YouTube channel that pays you that amount. Of course. Yeah. And, and it could be on whatever you decide to do, whatever you're good at. And everybody's yeah. good at something. Yeah, and it's and a I'll, process. Yeah, yeah, it's just a process. It's just putting the camera on you, whatever you're doing. Yeah. But see, there's a lot of people who say, and I work with a lot of people who, they have YouTube channels, they have like zero to a thousand subscribers, they put they put videos up and they say, nobody watches it. I get five views. Okay, so, I would tell them what you do is make sure your shorts are going. That's what's gonna bring your subscribers. Shorts, so shorts. talk about that. What, what if somebody doesn't know what a short is? What is a short is a, a less than one minute clip of the highlighted of the of the product that you have, whatever the video that you do. Mm -hmm. So it's less than a minute and it just puts it in a YouTube algorithm. And it's vertical like a TikTok or an Instagram yeah, exactly. reel. Exactly. And and then the YouTube guys will mostly uh, bless the shirt the, the short. Do you get a lot of uh, subscribers from your shorts? Cuz different ones have different Yes, I get tons of subscribers. You get a ton from there. From, and yeah. and do you find that those subscribers are the same people who stick around and watch the long form? Yeah, that draws them in. Like, yeah. oh wow, did she see, oh I got to see the whole interview. Yeah. How important is it to have a channel that has one theme to it, even if it's multiple. Um, it's very important. You have to find your niche and focus on that. Mm -hmm. And whatever that is, you just stay on that. Not saying you can't do anything else on your channel, mm -hmm. but mostly focus on that. And then whatever you want to throw out on the channel, you can do that also. And but YouTube wants you to focus on one thing. YouTube wants to. That's what they want. It's just like um, what ABC um, box they. You know kind of what you're going to get from that. You know, mm -hmm. so it needs to have a feel to it yes. that people can recognize that's your channel because exactly. it's called a channel for right. a reason. You don't want to um, have what I guess like basketball. You're doing basketball on there, and then now it's prayer time, or you, <laughs> you don't you, you don't want to yeah. you don't want to mix it like. And that. the people literally have that yeah. kind of stuff. And that's and that's because they're like that's me. That you're not that's winning. me. That's yeah. me. I have all these interests. Yeah. And what you're saying is, don't. Double down on the one interest that you really care about and stay like that until you get popular enough that people will try to ingest what you what It's you just like income streams. Yes. You go in like you have the last several years and now you can look at other things to look at. Mm -hmm. But you had to get to this point. So well, for, for on that same note, is it going to take someone else 10 years to get to where you are? Um, or do you think it happens faster these days? It happens days? way faster now. You guys, I was grinding in a time where the YouTube wasn't how it is now. They're mm -hmm. letting a lot of people in. Um, it, it's very profitable right now, uh, social media and YouTube. It doesn't have to just be YouTube. You got so many different platforms that make money. You got TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's lots of ways to get money. But mm -hmm. that's why I would say take advantage of every platform that you can do because you never know where you're going to go viral. Right? Not only do I have a million um, subscribers on YouTube, but I have like 900,000 on uh, probably eight or 900,000 on Facebook. Mm. On the real life yeah, page. Real life production, yeah. yeah. And so you, I, I agree with you that it won't take 10 years. Yeah. What do you think success is? Does it have to be a million subscribers? Yeah. It's, no. And that's the thing. It's the, it's the, I know it sounds, you see all these TikTok things and like, uh, enjoy the journey. And, <laughs> yeah, it's like, and that's like, it sucks. But no, what it, what it really be is, 
not enjoying the journey when you see uh, just a little bit of progress and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Then you know it can get, that's yeah. how it was every time. It was like, oh, this journey kind of sucks, but then I get that little bit of progress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh man, everybody here, you know? Yeah. Do people, when you're walking around Dallas, do people say real SG stars to you? Y- yes. <laughs> I'm asking, but I know the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah they do. <laughs> but, they, that, but that's from... They always ask, like, you know, I don't, I don't get, I don't get pictures. I get, hey, bro, can you interview me? Or I yeah. like that. I, I mean, I love that one, that one that you did. Or, man, yeah. I'm a big fan, but I rarely get pictures. Maybe that's how I come off. Don't probably get it's pictures. also too because you you all are not on camera too much except right. for you recently started uh, yeah. your new your new show. What's your new show about? The uh, Domino Effect. The Domino uh, Effect. So podcast. you just started that. Mm-hmm. The first one you put on how many views? The first one I did it landed around like I don't know you got it's either thirteen or seventeen thousand I'm not sure, but then the second one I did with Jaguar Wright that landed at two hundred and fifty five or something like that. Yeah, and when you look at the dashboard. Mm-hmm. And you look at the retention, how long the engagement. Mm-hmm. Are people looking at your videos, that one and the other ones? Are they looking at them for a long time? Or yeah, 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 yeah. They get you know something like an hour, forty-five minute video. Probably get like a ten minute, twelve minute watch time, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, engagement, and it's like it depends on what it is too, because mm-hmm. people will skip around, people. Will you know, speed up what right. you're doing because they want to hear the the parts. Do you put channel names on? I mean, the uh, chapter names on them, or uh, do you just let it ride? You know. Oh, you talking about um, time code? Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, certain things I time code, like big interviews will time code. Yeah, uh, yeah. The fans. Here's the thing about time coding. The fans will time code your stuff for you. Oh, okay. So you can just copy and paste that. A lot, most fans, if they're oh. truly fans, they'll time code for everybody else. Yeah, and for anybody who doesn't understand that, the time code is literally like, okay, at two minutes they this said happens. this, yeah. but what YouTube lets you do is put that into your description and turn it into chapters. Right. So when you are on a video, you see the name of some section, that's mm-hmm. because it's been time coded. Yeah. And it, it is a lot of work to do that. Right. It's not, you know, the worst thing in the world because again, you're you're making YouTube videos. I'm talking to the person who might be right. deciding right now. Actually, I want to see if I can make this a career. You're making YouTube videos, and so it's an extra thirty minutes right. of your time. Yeah. But it's still, it could be interesting. And there is no right or wrong answer I've seen. Some people say the chapters are perfect; they really make it great for the for the viewers, so they stick around. And some people say. When they know what's coming up, they don't stick around. To, you know, they just go to that one section and leave. Yeah, but that's all right. Anywhere it goes, the what YouTube wants you to do is click on the video. So whatever that that happens, they want you to click on. The video. I gotta I gotta push back a little bit. Okay. Because YouTube also they definitely want you to click on the video. Right. But they want you to stay on the video. So I tell you what happens a lot of times. Okay. Um, our phones get or, or TV. Once you click on that video. Most of the time you walk away, <laughs> you leave out, and then that video is going. Sure. You know? I mean, that can happen, so, but it's not its not the majority of No, of but the what I'm saying, they want you to stay. But what I'm saying, that's why it's created another way for the thumbnails. So you'll click, even if you don't like it, don't, the, the thumbnail. Yeah, will, thumbnails yeah. are really important. Titles yeah. are really important. Mm-hmm. The subject is really important. The Everything first, important. the first thirty seconds is really important. Called the hook. Your whole all of that's really presentation important. Presentation is important. Yeah. yeah, but I will say because this my this my episode. Right. Retention is also important. Yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely important. Yeah. Yeah. So like, make sure it's good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. For sure. Like, what do you think of uh, Vlad and Shea Club and like talk a little bit about those? Um. Uh, I like Vlad. I think Vlad is super professional. Oh really? Yes, I okay. think that um, his whole setup is very professional. Is Vlad Russian, or is it just a name that um, they use? I think he's. I don't know. I don't know. What he okay. Is. I know he's. Jewish. Is he white? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think his his things are uh, very professional. I like his setup. It's very consistent. Um, you, he's been following his same formula, and he has never has, has changed it up. Like he's been doing some podcast stuff right now, which I think that he needs to get away from because he's. I think he's trying to adapt to the younger crowd. But no, you. It's not even. It's not really about that. It's like 
you're 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 good in that lane. Yeah, you have you dominate you, you, that you, lane. You dominate it, and even if people get bigger than you or whatever, you still are black. Yeah. You know? What about Shay Shay Club? Oh uh, yeah, man, that Cat Williams interview set him. Yeah. He, he'll never have to do anything over again. He said, Shay, what's his name? Uh, Cat Williams or the other uh, guy, Shannon, Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp said that he made more from YouTube. Uh-huh monetization of that video and those clips than he made in his entire football career. Yeah, exactly. He'll never have to do everything, anything again. Mm-hmm. He's doing that strictly because he wants to now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then do you, and then he doesn't have, I mean, he had all those issues with, what's the other guy? Uh, Bayless? Yeah, Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless yeah. He didn't have to, these are, these are real, this is real. Like so, this part yeah. is so real and important. Go ahead. It is because um, I like to say that um, you, you two, you, you work like you, YouTube, what I'm trying to say, how can I say it? Like, um, you do, you still have a boss with YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's Google, right? So, okay. So you go in there and they just tell you, don't do these things. Yeah. And if you do these things, it will give you three strikes and then you're fired. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say, this is the person that you need to be working for. Yeah. But here's the thing, you're gonna have to work. Mm-hmm. You know, it ain't, if yeah. you don't work, you don't eat. Right. So the, the it can be you have a, a channel to consume. That's right. fine. Right. Great, in fact, because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, second to Google that owns it. Right. It could be that you have it as a side project so that you can right. have videos that you like making. Not everything has to be monetized. Right. But if you do want to go after making this your your main gig right you can't do it halfway no there's no you take this very serious because it's it's your livelihood mm-hmm. so you're gonna, mm-hmm. you're gonna take it really serious what what gets the most views on your channel <laughs> um what i'm seeing now is <laughs> there's a lot of uh, people that are coming to the front like diddy right now mm-hmm. and anybody that has um will Anybody that would come forward and talk about things that have happened to them mm-hmm. behind huge celebrities is going to go. That's why Jaguar is doing. Yeah, that's so, I mean, she's been saying this stuff. For she's been years. saying it forever. But... She's been warning, sounding the alarm yeah. for years. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to you about that too because it's so interesting to me. She has a she has beef with a lot of people. Like she has a thing, and I and I don't begrudge her that because she has obviously gone through a lot of things. Right, and that's her experience. Do you think some of the people who she's talked about would ever be on your show? Oh yeah, of course. Really? Yeah. You, they wouldn't like they wouldn't be upset with you because you okay, you gave her that platform, and she she it, got to say I what mean, she got to say. It's all it's all it's all business at the end of the day. That's in business. I might I might not like you, but I might like you tomorrow. That's the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would you okay? Okay, I'm gonna push on that a little bit. Would you have somebody? Because you said earlier you might not want to have the the serial killer, but you would. Yeah. So we all saw that video of Cassie being hurt. Mm-hmm. And that was painful to watch. Right. Because you know what else she must have gone through to uh-huh. this man and no, not been believed and all that kind of stuff. I was going to say, I guess, you know, would you have Diddy on? But of course you would. Of Why wouldn't you? Diddy. But Why? would you hey. but would you have him on and smile at him and shake his hand? Oh, no, no. We, would, a, we would have to... What we go off with is the fans. Mm-hmm. What do the fans want us to do? Okay, but I'm saying, I, I understand so, that. I understand what you're saying. But right. I'm saying as my brother, as a human being, and I'm knowing not, what Diddy has done. I'm not here to, I'm not. Um, you're not a judge. I'm not a judge. I didn't sign up. But I you didn't. also get to, like, okay, let's say this. Let's say somebody was incredibly disrespectful to Angel. Right. To a point where they hit her. Yeah. A man, a grown man, mm-hmm. hit her. Mm-hmm. And she hates them. Right. And she's like, I don't, like, this has hurt me in my life. Then me and him would have a separate interview. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about what you would do to him. I was saying, yeah. would, would you be able to shake his hand and say, this is all business. I'm going to have you sit here. You're a celebrity and you ha- you're in the public eye, so I need you to sit down here. I mean, that would, he would be in my business. So it's, it's, I don't, I don't try to take it super personal like uh-huh, that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So 
I don't know Diddy. <laughs> like I don't. Yeah, but you know what he's done. Yeah, I know what he, I know what he's done, and I'm sure a lot of people that I've shook my I've, I've shook hands with Terrence Gangster Williams. <laughs> I'm sure he's done. But that's different. That is different. You yeah. proved why that's different. Right, right. Because so, he has said that he did these things. He has paid his time. Diddy is different. He okay. has not said he's done it. Yeah, so he's he's on a video doing doing this, right? Horrible and things is horrible what you, you mispronounced. So he says, man, I don't know. I'm going to choose realize three stars, man, to get off my, you know, he just wants to come. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to. No, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that would be wrong. Right. But my question really is. Yeah. Behind the scenes, as he's coming into the room, are you like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" No, I, I, I can't say what everybody else would do, but I know what I'm I would saying do. that's why I'm asking. You. I treat I'm everybody at, accordingly. I'm not going to treat him bad because of something that he's done. You're not going to treat Diddy bad. You're no, not going to. I'm not going to spit on him and be like, "Oh, you." Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do so that. So you're, you're what you're saying is you're going to get better the, person than I am. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. We're going to get the job done. Because and I'm going to ask him, "Hey, okay, there's tell one, me your okay, side of the story." You ever see somebody like? Gail King interviewing R. R. Kelly. Kelly. I saw that. She's not, bat, you know, dapping him and saying, "Oh, it's so," because she'll do that with the Harry Styles, yeah. with the Beyonce. She will, Jay Z. She will get very fan like. Right. Yeah. But I'm with him, interview, she's standing on I'm, business. I would interview Diddy like he was serial killer. <laughs> That's how I would do it. Okay. That's yeah. what I need to hear. From yeah. You. Yeah. I'm not gonna be like, "Oh, what's up, baby?" Diddy. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, because, no, I'm not gonna be fake with him. Because if like, Fifty Cent came in here, you would do that because you, you I mean, you've met him before. Yeah, but you like him. We know that Diddy's on trial in in the in the media. Yeah, right? he's just on trial. Like, yeah. So we have to treat him accordingly. No, I I understand. Yeah. I understand all that. But it's you're like, talking about public perception. I'm asking you about you. I, so like the uh, I'm just that's just how I'm built. Like the guy um, that went in the uh, place and murdered. Uh, uh, people at the church or Dylan, I forgot yeah. what it was. But I could be the officer, me personally, that walks him and yeah, puts yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. on him. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like staying away from him. Yeah. <laughs> so and like, I, hey, and I could, take your shot, take your shot. But <laughs> I could too. And yeah. I, I think we are, I think based on the arguments that we have had, right. that really are just discussions that are right. heated, I believe that we are very similar right. in a lot of ways when it comes to that fair and balanced, yeah. like almost to the point of, like, I wanted to have uh, Candace Owens on, right. uh, Your First Million. And I think she's a horrible human being. I think oh. she's terrible. I probably, we don't, we're not the same because I'll, I'll say how bad I think somebody is. Right. But I wanted to have, like, I really wanted to look her in the eye and have her say some of that crazy stuff to me. Right. So I can understand her. And my audience was like, nah, we don't want to see that. Right. <laughs> like, some people, you know, they were like, we don't want to see that. But well, here's the trick: is they'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, they, they will watch it. But it, but I I understand the understand like the thing of like everybody's human, and I want to get to the core of it. Oprah would have Diddy on. Right. That's why they. That's why Gail King. Yeah. Um. This whole thing with Oprah being friends with Diddy and stuff too. That's that's what's been. Said. But who wasn't friends with Diddy? Yeah, exactly. But who wasn't friends with Diddy? Everybody's friends with Diddy. You know, I I did a Diddy event. Uh huh. Diddy follows me on X or Twitter for some reason. I don't know why. Um, maybe it was around that event if I look at it, you yeah. know. Any other time I would have been trying to uh, get investment from him or, you know, I think I've, I've sent him a DM asking him a couple years ago if he wanted to invest in something together. Right. Um, but now that we know what we know, we have to be better. Right. We ha I mean, so... I think that's probably a, a different conversation for a different yeah, day I because just, <laughs> it's just definitely. Yeah, what I interviewed did yes. <laughs> but what but what you're saying <laughs> is that I'm not gonna... okay. Let me ask you a different way. Okay, is there yes, anybody yes. you would not put on th this show? Um, and give a platform. Would you put Donald Trump on? Yeah, I, I I think you should. By yeah, the way. Yeah, if you no, ever got I'm Donald Trump, is, I think you should. Nobody, and I should be there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, there's nobody that I wouldn't Please give. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> there's nobody that I wouldn't give a a, a, a platform for because I think everybody everybody can talk and everybody can say. I would interview a, a Ku Klux Klan member. Oh yeah, I would too. I would. I would. There's nobody that. But so there, there's a difference. Okay, I think the difference is. I would, I think I would talk to Diddy. I, I haven't had that conversation with myself yet. I think I would. But he would get all of my disdain and ire. Like yeah. he would just, it would just be, 
he what would be very it? uncomfortable. So, but it wouldn't be in any audience. It wouldn't be anything that made him think that he had any right to something good. I would talk to him if I was as I was a detective in my part. That's all. I, would mm. I wouldn't talk to him. Personally. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm going to talk to everybody. Like, no matter what they did. Well, that's how you do talk. Yeah. Your 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 co-founders have a different style. Each person has a different style of talking. Yeah. What is your style when you interview? Um. My style is to let the person get off what they want to say. I don't interrupt anybody. Mm -hmm. So I want them to finish their thought at all times. Okay. And you're very, this is how you are in real life. You're, right. you're like quiet, but powerful. We know that you're strategizing. We know that you're thinking. We know you're pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be more likely to say, come over here, say it real quiet. And then they go, everybody runs around and does it. Mm -hmm. And then your co-founders, their style, I think both, they're, they're so much louder than you are. Because right. people can hear it. Anybody who's, can go to a video right now and hear it, they're asking questions. They're asking questions I don't think you would ask. Mm -hmm. Do you all discuss that at any point? Um, yeah. I mean, we discuss. Yeah. We try to not talk over each other. And we try to, we have a little thing that we do to make sure we stay on the topic. We point down like this. Mm, that's interesting because it can get, it's a conversation with someone who's very interesting with three four five people mm -hmm. interviewing can be heated yeah so it's like that's our little so let's come back to it yeah let's stay right here yeah and on angela e you said i asked you um <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry it just sounded to me um because you know my hearing is crazy so yeah. i'm hearing all kinds of stuff um <laughs> you said on angela e <laughs> you said I asked you why you all don't do like I, I do with my interviews where it's like okay all of, I mean sometimes you do but most times you don't and you said something like it's about the it's about the guest it's about the guest so yes. elaborate I don't um I want you to get that the intimate feeling of you're talking to that person and mm -hmm. it's just like they don't they don't really get, we're cool, we're important and all that. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're here to see the, the street stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's not about to be focused on us. We have other things like we have podcasts that we might do yeah. after uh, artists is here or something like that. And then we'll go and we'll and talk you'll see a few people on there. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have different kind of yeah, brands. And that's just fun and that's just yeah. that's a good time. But um yeah, so we just yeah. wanna make it about that the the people that are up here. Yeah. Yeah, and I would imagine advertisers should like be reaching out to you, but do you do you have some sort of um beyond YouTube monetization that puts advertisement in? Do you have anything against like a liquor brand um, or somebody? I'm sure in? that we're very open. We just want to see what it is. Yeah, like. cuz it seems like y'all have y'all really to that point you just made, you yeah. kind of wanted to be like this Kind of specific thing if yeah. you had to be like brought to you by yeah, yeah. crunch a bunch yeah 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 I've, seen, I've seen some crazy ads yeah i'm like no i don't think that goes yeah. together <laughs> i think it comes back to right. it's definitely a, a income stream there there's probably a couple million dollars and in, 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 in money there but it all comes back to you don't want a boss right uh what did uh terry Gioma, who's like multi-millionaire right liquid all that she said recent, recently on a different interview, she said she would rather live under a bridge than have a boss. Right. To ever go back to it. She used to be a teacher. Right. So it's almost like, yeah, you could have advertisers, which you could, but then that, that contract would need to be very clear that th we do it the way we want to. Like Casey Neistat is someone who has, I think, full control of what he does with his ads. Right. Like, this is how I'm going to do it. Stephen Bartlett, I think, has full control of what he does with his ads. Right. It's either do it my way or we just don't do it because I don't need you. Exactly. And that's I mean, that's exactly where we're at, too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Well, and how like, does that feel to be where you don't need? I, man, it's a very powerful thing because me, Jeff, and Joker, we own this platform. And yeah. we have full ownership of it. Yeah. So there's nobody that can come in there and be like, hey, you know, we need this. It's full ownership. Yeah. Like, can't tell us what to do. Can't stop us. The only person that can stop us is YouTube, and they, yeah. you know, we have no, we have, we don't have any strikes or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, so. 
And, and it, <clears throat> it, you are across multi platforms. So if something did happen where YouTube was like, for some reason they took down Vlad and Chase Club and all mm -hmm. these different things, and you went with it, you have all these other ones. Yeah. But exactly. you also can look over it and say, well, other people are doing similar content. Hopefully we're not going to be right. uh, targeted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything last thing you, I should know in, in this, your first million, like I should know, the audience should know what it, what this is like or how they can get there. Um, again, uh, what I would say is consistency is the key. If you stay doing anything consistent, it will grow. And it took me 10 years, but it could take you a year, it could take you less than that. You could produce a video that is so different and so spectacular that it takes you a day. I mean, we got your monetized first, but if you monetize, it could take you mm -hmm. a day. It, mm -hmm. You never know what's going to go, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't uh, take. Mm -hmm. So, and if uh, some more quotes, I would say if you if you want it bad enough, you're going to get it. <laughs> you mm -hmm. go get it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Just, yeah. Just keep going, like, and don't stop. Like, there's no reason to stop. Because mm -hmm. even through losing people, losing yeah. how we started. I, I'll put it like this. Um, there's a, a video, and it says, um, it's, I don't know the title. I might put it in the description or, or something, but it's a, a video that you could play. And it's it's got background music and it lets you know everybody that passed since I've been building it. Mm. And it has music in the background, and it's let's just say it's like a three minute video. So through that, uh -huh. through personal depression, yes, through financial ups and downs that are now up. You still built this, uh -huh. and it does give you freedom. Right. And I remember when we were in Sweden two years ago. Okay. We were uh -huh. in the forest. Yes. Watching somebody on a, like a harpist or something in the forest. Right. It was crazy. Yeah. And you turned to me and said, "You know, most of my friends are dead or in right. jail, uh -huh. and I'm here." And I think. I don't mean to get too, super down, but it's yeah. almost like there's, I know from the comments that I get, there's mm -hmm. some people who are really down. Right. Some people who are really down, those same people would be watching this whole video because they're looking for some hope. Right. And what you're saying is like, there is hope. There is oh, possibility. Yeah. No, no, no. There's, there's, there's definitely possibility for everything. Mm -hmm. A little, I know we got to go, but a little background on my thing. My story is a lot of things started changing for me when I put down um, some of my vices. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you start. Mm -hmm. Just start changing things around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alfred. I call you Alfred. You go by Rook. <laughs> you okay with me calling you Alfred still? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I always I'd like to check every once in a while. It says Alfred Rook Hamilton. You can follow me at Real Life Rook on Instagram. Um, Real Life Productions on YouTube with a Y, R-E-A-L-Y-F-E. -E. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>